Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Cobre, a couple that loves to play board games. And it is Roll and Write Month. No, it's not. What do you mean? We did that last year. Can we do it again? No. But we can talk about more Roll and Writes if you want to. Roll and Write Month Rewind. <laughs> that was my rewind. <laughs> no, well, in a year ago, about a year ago, about a year, year in ago, August, we decided to cover over 50 roll and rights in one month. Wow. And now that a year has passed, more roll and rights have surfaced. Yes, we've discovered more roll and rights. So we wanted to take this uh, moment to tell you about the 10 new roll and rights that we've been excited to get to the table that were not covered during our month. That's a long title. Yeah, shorten it up. Top 10 roll and rights forever. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> not forever. Not forever. These are top 10 new roll and rights that we want, we're excited to tell you about. Or new 10 roll and rights. New 10 roll and rights. Roll and new, new 10. Rights. Right and roll new games 10. Hit it off with game number one. Woo! Uh, rolling Realms. Well, designed by Jamie Stagmeyer, published by Stonemeyer Games. This game celebrates all of Stonemeyer Games and now non Stonemeyer games, games than just that. In realms that you play in rounds. So basically, mm -hmm. there's many realms you can choose from. You'll play three around, and each of them is a mini game of where you can place your dice in order to earn the most stars. Yes. Yep. There's resources that you can gain that will allow you to adjust your dice and maybe utilize more than two dice per turn. Yep. But in general, this game surfaced out of the beginning of the pandemic when it was uh, created through a way. For people to connect over camera and play along because this is mm -hmm. a game that you can play and then somebody else can later watch all the dice that were drawn and play with you or play yeah, at the same or time or video. you can do a live stream about yeah. it. There's a lot you can do. You just play with friends and have somebody rolling the dice mm -hmm. and showing what the results are. Yeah. This is essentially a living roll and write. Mm -hmm. You're going to be getting a new cards that yeah, you get, you get these new cards that are going to be coming out through um, uh, expansion packs, essentially, mm -hmm. that Stonemaier will be releasing in partnership with a lot of cool other games mm -hmm. out there. So keep your eye out for those. But yeah, like Ilya said, is you'll play through three rounds and you'll play three different mini games from different mm -hmm. games each round and just try to score the most points. Whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. It's a lot of fun. You can shorten the games as well, so you can only play like three realms and just have it be a one game. Mm -hmm. There's also a fantastic solo mode in this game. Yeah. Again, not being a not solo gamer, this is a solo mode that I've played completely because I really enjoyed it. Because you're basically playing mini golf, frisbee golf. Because well, I, well it's probably it's mini, mini golf, golf, but I'm gonna say frisbee golf um, because Jamie loves frisbee golf. So or disc golf, disc golf. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> So, but yeah, in general, the production, everything in this game is just wonderful and I can't wait to experience the many realms that are to come. All right, next one, we have Delicious. Deliciosos. Delicious is published by Pencil First Games. It's designed by Steve Finn and Eduardo Boraf, and the art is done by Clementine Camperdew. Similar to Rolling Realms, this is another one that you can play on a live stream, digitally, and more. To be fair, I feel like a lot of roll and writes can work itself, work That's themselves true. into a digital space. But this one, I think, like stemmed out of the, out of that. Yeah, and basically, you're building a garden mm -hmm. of vegetables and fruits. Mm -hmm. So two cards are drawn every round, and you, uh, with, along with those cards, either come or two vegetables are drawn every round, and along with yeah. them are either a fruit or a tool that you can use. And basically, you're trying to fill up your different sections. And based on how you fill them up, you'll score more points. And there's exactly. restrictions. You're trying to get, like, like, everything has to be the same in this container. Everything has to be different in this container. For those of you so who have played Herbaceous, for example, which is another per mm -hmm. for which is another pencil first game. It gives those similar vibes in the set Gold collection type mm -hmm. way, but now it's in a roll and write. The art in this game is stunning. Absolutely beautiful. It makes me deliciously hungry Ooh. and I could just eat vegetables all day. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Delicious. Next up we have 
Merchant of Magic. 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 So this is a one to eight player game by Clarence Simpson. Mm hmm. And this one's really cool because you're essentially setting up your own little shop to be able to sell particular items and score yourself a lot of points. Are you a merchant? You are in fact a merchant. Are you selling magic items? That's the plan, Stan. So essentially in this game, what you're going to do is you're gonna roll four different dice. They're all different faced. So there's a D6, uh, D8, D10, and D12. And based on those values and the colors that show up, it's representative of where you can use those dice. And they'll provide resources that allow you to focus in on particular merchant items that will eventually allow you to build them into larger scale Coins, magic right? items. And yeah, and yeah. then once you've completed a set collection of that particular item, you'll gather yourself coins. Coins, 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 coins. is the way you win this game because you want to be able to sell the most coins. Yeah, I really enjoy this game. I feel like it feels really different than a lot of other rolling rates. Mm -hmm. I can't quite put my finger on why that is. But yeah, I like... well, like, okay, to be fair, like, when you play the game, you've got to sell the cards that are in front of you, mm -hmm. and the way you sell them is by upgrading your board in front of you, and that's, mm -hmm. like, what you specialize in kind of thing. So mm -hmm. the cards that are in front of you are the ones that you're able to sell, but the trick is that they move. They move around to the table, and you have to be able to sell them when they're in front of you, mm -hmm. or you miss your opportunity. Yeah. So a lot to really appreciate about the merchants of magic. There's also characters in this game that there we didn't is. even mention about, and that adds another flair to characters. This game beautiful, and the art is pretty great as well. It really is, yeah. Love it. Fourth or thir fourth game that we need to talk about is next station London. Who doesn't love transportation planning? This guy. <laughs> this guy. Well. I, so in this game, it's really interesting because you open well, it up. Who's it's designed by? Who's oh, it published by? You're right. So this one is designed by Matthew Dunstan and is published by Blue Orange Games. Mm -hmm. Now in Next Station London, it's I'm just gonna share this anecdote because it's yes. really funny. You open the box and there's four colors which you assume are player colors. Nope, wrong. In fact, you'll be using all four player colors, not player colors, <laughs> to build transit lines. And it's really interesting because every round, every player will have a different colored marker, crayon, pencil, pencil, pencil. <laughs> and tool for writing. Cards will be flipped and you will draw transit lines from your last station to the next one, creating one single line. There are some exceptions and some twists that come with cards, there is, as, as rolling most rights, rolling rights. Flipping rights. But in general, you build your transit line, and then at the end of the round, you'll score points based on how many districts you went to, how many in one district you've had. It's a combination of the two, so you're trying to basically maximize that. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone will then pass their penciled crayon they're colored. They're writing utensil. <laughs> they're writing utensil that is different colors. <laughs> to the next player. To the next player. So now you have a new color to start from when you're building another transit line. Mm -hmm. Now, if transit lines cross over and become interchange stations, they're worth more points. So you're essentially building up, but you're obviously limited because you can't pass through lines. There's restrictions in the game already. Don't want to cause collisions. So... Be transit becomes tricky once everything starts moving. Oh yeah, that fourth that fourth round? Yeah, oh. tricky, tricky. But at the end of the game, you'll score points for the interchange section. So if there's a lot of, you want of all the difference touching rain. the same yeah. one, you'll score points. Um, there's goals as well that you can play yep. with. So yep. there's a lot of variety, but this is a very lovely game that I would definitely recommend. Super easy to play, super mm -hmm. quick to pick up on, and yeah, you'll enjoy it uh, right from the start. Let's go to the next station. Next, uh, rolling right. Oh, we're supposed to say London. Oh, uh, I was ready for the next game. Well, bring it to us. Riverside. So this one's funny because I think we got it. We must have got it like right after. Right at the end or like right after rolling right month. Mm -hmm. And we raved a lot about this game. Yes. Along um, with its uh, partner game. Well, I'm going to call it a partner game, but it's published by Jilly Fox Games. This mm -hmm. one's designed by Elif and Edmund, um, or Asmund and Elif Svensson. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they also publish Doodle Dash. 
Which came out came out around the same time and come together is, now too. Oh yeah, yeah Jelly Fox game is hot, hot, hot. Yes. So in Riverside, you'll be taking tourists across the river. Mm -hmm. There's a modular setup, and basically the way that it works is you want to visit and see as much as you possibly can while the boat travels around. Mm -hmm. Now the boat will move a varying number of spaces. So sometimes the games are shorter than others. So yes. it's really trying to utilize and make the most of your time on this beautiful riverside, almost cruise I want to say, but not quite. Yeah, and then the way you, the interesting one about this one is there's six dice and you utilize the uh, rolls differently. So every mm -hmm. time a certain number of dice uh, based on the median, I think it is. The like have the yeah. one no like the oh dice yeah the middle the middle number between all the There's six some dice that go above is some it like... six or five yeah six, between yeah. the six six dice um five five, five dice no six dice because the, the green one stays on top right yes, yes. five six. dice yeah yes okay. <laughs> it's been a hot one of, minute <laughs> yeah, one of the dice is going or one of the dice is going to represent the middle and then those dice plus the middle will go to the bottom and the rest will go to the top there's a penalty for taking the top die. Um, but also can be advantageous to you, so you have to kind of like give and take what you're going to decide uh, where you want to be able to move and the number of circles you want to be able to scratch out mm -hmm. on you your own board. Gotta get all those tickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot tickets of... Tickets are multipliers. Yeah, there's a lot of various ways that this game just sings to my strategy self. Mm -hmm. So we, we love teaching this game. Yes. We would definitely yeah. recommend it and it has such a high replayability as well. Riverside is always one of our favorites to bring to the table. Yeah, and it's like a more um, complicated roll and write too. So it's really nice. It's <laughs> Meaty roll yeah, and write. Exactly. Crunchy. Well, that is six already. No, five. Five? Five already. Number six. Welcome to the moon. Welcome to the moon. Welcome to the moon. So this one is designed by Benoit Turpin and Alexis Allard, and it's published by Blue Cocker Games. And we talked about Welcome to and Welcome to New Las Vegas, but True. we did not talk about Welcome to the Moon. But it's a new game. Which I will say is my favorite. Oh, I still like the original the most. Yeah, I think, so this is a one to six player where basically you are on a trajectory to get to the moon. And there's various ways that you can do that through the various kind of missions. There's eight different missions that you can play. Yeah. I mean, not only are you trying to get to the moon, you're trying to create it, Life. you're trying to make it livable there. Settlement. Yeah. So the way that the game is played is there are three cards that are flipped and there are symbols and then there's numbers. So you'll write a number and take this corresponding action, which is denoted by the symbol. And this looks very different in each of the maps, mm -hmm. which is why I really like this game is because it kind of puts that twist in the original Welcome To, but creates a variable way of experiencing the game time to time. In There's a small box. In well, a small, smaller, in a smaller box. box. Yeah. It's also dry erase, which I love because yep. the other games are not. And the last thing I'll say is there's a campaign mode in this game. Mm -hmm. And the neat twist about the campaign mode is that it is really meant to be played more than once because you'll complete it once, but then the story continues beyond. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, it adds another like flavor to the story, mm -hmm. uh, to the campaign that you just experienced. So it's, it's a very continuous, you will want to play this game over and over. Mm -hmm. It's another one where like, there's a couple, like I really like the second scenario in this game. So sometimes I'll just pull out the second scenario and be like, let's play this. Yeah, you don't have to have any prior knowledge mm -hmm. of the other maps to go right into the second, mm -hmm. the fifth, whatever the map is. The, twi the twists are thematic. There's just a lot to really love about this game and if you enjoy the welcome to series would mm -hmm. highly recommend welcome yeah. to the moon yeah and then on top of that it's just a lot of game punched into one box so it's a great value buy do you even need game. any other rolling rights yes but that's besides <laughs> the point and that is welcome to the moon seven i am terrible at counting but it is seven it is we'll take a look at explore and draw isle of cats this is the uh, yeah the isle of cats explore and draw mm -hmm. And essentially what you're going to be doing is drawing those, for those of you who are familiar with Isle of Cats, mm -hmm. you'll be drawing the cat shapes onto your own boat. Mm -hmm. And the way that you'll be doing this is through a draft. Mm -hmm. You'll set up this three by three grid uh, with the different cards and each player will be able to select a row and a column, not replacing them, mm -hmm. uh, at least until the next round. 
There are a lot of missions that you'll be able to take instead of drawing on your board that will help you decide how you want to uh, gain more and more points mm -hmm. through these missions. And it's just a lot. It's really reminiscent of Isle of Cats. They did a mm -hmm. really good job of taking what Isle of Cats is and transitioning it over into this explore and draw. Mm -hmm. I think they did a really good job. Yeah, this was designed by Frank West. Yeah, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So, is it, yeah, and I'll, I think what I'll add to this too is that, um, actually I don't know if there's much more to add. I think you covered it really well. Like they take the base, like the Isle of Cats game and really condense into Explore and Draw and make it much more compact, which I really like. Cause you do get the feel of the Isle of Cats playing this game. Although there's much, many more layers that I love in the Isle of Cats. Yeah. I feel like this is a condensed version of, hey, if you really like this, let's bring out this big box. Just wait till I show you the kittens and all the other stuff that's involved. Uh, but it is the combination of taking cats versus taking goals and mm -hmm. kind of what do you do in order to get the most points and it's a lot of fun. Yes. Yep. And it's one to six players so there is in fact a solo mode. And you get a set of colored markers. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're not just one color. Mm -hmm. You're all of them because cats are different colors. That's I love the seventh one. Cats. Seven. The seventh This one. is the seventh <laughs> one. I did it right. Now, right. I want to talk about dungeons, dice, and da, 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 danger. Danger. So this one's designed by Richard Garfield and published by Robinsberger. Now, in Dungeons, Dice, and Danger, you will traverse through four dungeons. You will roll dice and face the danger in each of the dungeons. Mm -hmm. There'll be little mini bosses and a big boss that you'll have to beat. But the way that you travel through the game is the dice that you roll. Yes. So based on your roll, you can maybe get away with going somewhere and sometimes you can't. Yes. So, and that's, you know, that's a real dungeon. Sometimes the wall is just going to come down and you can't go through. So you have to go the other way. But you know what? All of a sudden, crack in the wall. You can go through. Wow. Who knew? Who knew? Crack in the wall. Crack in the wall. Yeah. There's also a bear peon in bear there. Peon. It's a, a bear, bear scorpion. scorpion, which is amazing. Uh, I think Cam Kendall. The, the art arts. in this is unreal. It's stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's a ranging difficulty in these dungeons as well, so you can start at the very base and then mm -hmm. get all the way up to the most difficult one, which is, uh, it is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. It's tough to begin with, so I like the progression that you face in this game. The cool thing about this is on your turn, um, everybody gets to use the dice that are there, but on your turn, you have access to the black colored die, mm -hmm. and everybody else can't use it. Or they can, but they have to spend like a special action. So it's nice in that sense because everybody um, gets Everyone plays to, every turn, yeah, which play is every simultaneous turn. play is really nice. And that's one of our favorite things about rolling rights. Yeah, again, when you get to play together and you don't always have to wait. So mm -hmm. yeah, if this is a game that you are intrigued by, we'd recommend it, it's fun. Yes. Fun, fun, fun. Number nine. Nine. We're almost there. Almost. But the next one we're going to talk about is Dinosaur Island Roar and Ray. Roar. Roar. This one's published by Pandasaurus Game, and the game is done by Brian Lewis, David McGregor, and Marissa Misura. And essentially what you're doing in this game is you're building your own dinosaur zoo. Park. Park. Yeah. Dinosaurs are Dinosaur Nazis. Park. Park. And you're doing this by rolling these dice that will give you a variety of different things. You're able to use whatever face value is on those die to generate DNA, to generate income, to specialize your workers that are at your zoo, and essentially use all of those things to turn um, to turn it into dinosaurs and place those dinosaurs into your park. Mm -hmm. You'll score points through a variety of different goals and you'll be able to gain access to more specialized individuals um, through the variety or the variability of the game offered by the different cards. I like this one a lot because it takes what's traditionally like i feel like a lot of roll and rights and flip and rights are very strict with how you write things and here like that, that is still the case but in your grid you're actually putting buildings you're putting paths to buildings so you can be a yeah. little bit more creative of like it makes you really feel like you're building a park mm -hmm. uh which i really enjoy also the dice in this game are really fun they're great colors the dna is very inviting 
there's a lot of elements like kind of overlaying in the mechanics that really invite me back to the game. There's yes. a lot of really good strategy in this game. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, we've never played actually Dinosaur Island. We played Dinosaur we World. We played Dinosaur World. But it, it, what it does is it takes Dinosaur Island and really condenses it into this wonderful roll and write experience. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And then, like I said, is there's... Um, like you've got your threat that's also involved in this. Mm -hmm. The dice, the way that that works is you actually are drafting the dice this mm -hmm. time too, so it works differently than um, what I'm used to seeing mm -hmm. in um, Roll and Writes. So that's really nice. Gives a little bit of a, 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 a flair to this game. And of course, you've got round end bonuses as well that you've got to aim for going through this game. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, quite a joy to play. Yeah, if you want a little bit of a heavier rolling rate, exactly. this is the one. Yeah. Now last, but certainly not least, is <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Three, sisters. Three Sisters. So as you may remember, the number one game on, on both, of our, of both of our top yeah. 10 rolling rates was Fleet the Dice Game, which is the first game of the loaded roll and dice series from Motor City Gameworks. Mm -hmm. So this, designed by Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, uh, is... Three sisters. Yes, exactly. So three sisters are three crops that are typically grown together to mm -hmm. support each other. So one kind yes. of provides a little bit more shade. The other, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a rocket scientist. It is actually like an agricultural method mm -hmm. to planting like uh, vegetables and different mm -hmm. um, like, I guess like agricultural stuff. So like it is super cool to see that theme shine mm -hmm. through and see how they've utilized that to create this game. So basically you'll be planting plants but also utilizing your buildings and sheds, sheds and multiple different actions. Different you can, actions. If you've played Fleet the Dice game it's essentially like your harbor versus your like fishing, fishing um, boats. Yeah. But so. you also have an apiary you can work with. Mm -hmm. You also have some beautiful flowers you can build. Yeah. And fruit. Who doesn't love fruit? Exactly. Trees. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's layers in this game. It's Farmer Edith. You'll follow her along as you build and uh, commit various actions that are associated with the dice that are played. Mm -hmm. And overall, it's such a wonderful experience. Uh, I keep flip-flopping whether I like this one more or Fleet the Dice game. I will say that Three Sisters is a lot more, I actually think it's crunchier than Fleet the Dice game. I would and agree. I, I, so particularly for that reason, I think I would lean towards Fleet. Mm -hmm. There are so many cool combos that you can do in this game though. Mm -hmm. You really start to feel like you're popping off like throughout the, probably like the later rounds, mm -hmm. um, five through eight, I would say is like mm -hmm. where this game really starts to shine. And the cool thing about this game as well that I probably said about Fleet, I believe I mentioned about Fleet, is that mm -hmm. like as you play the game, you progressively just get better. And it's fun to try out the variety of strategies that are involved in this game. Mm -hmm. And it's just a joy. It's this dice drafter similar to Fleet. Mm -hmm. um, and it definitely, you can definitely see the overlaps between the two of the games. Yeah, it's a stunning game. I would definitely recommend Three Sisters. And that's and that it! is all the roll and writes we've played. So that's 10 new roll and writes <laughs> that we would recommend to you to check out that are newer in the world. Yes. Are these on our top 10 list? I don't know. Maybe we'll have to redo our top 10 list next year or something. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get a little bit more to come in. Exactly. But who knows? Maybe we'll continue this as a roll and write week and maybe we'll see you this Wednesday with another roll and write video. Boom! Wow. What Roll and Write games have you enjoyed recently? Comment down below as that is our question of the day. Is there ones that we may be missed out on? Mm -hmm. We're always looking for more Roll and Writes to play. Mm -hmm. But until next time, if you liked this video, give us that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, press that bell notification because we make weekly videos and we love having conversations with you. So leave a comment down below. We will see you in the next one. Goodbye.